Hello! In this video, we are going to talk about the city of Athens in terms of its layout, as well as some of the major monuments in Athens in the Archaic period. So I'm going to be trying to combine both the camera so that we can see the map I have up here uh, and some slides. So this is going to be a bit of a fun adventure. Um, so we're looking here at the city of Athens in particular for the same reason that we are focused on Athens elsewhere. We're talking about politics and things like that. And that is because Athens is very, very well preserved, right? Um, we have uncovered many monuments, many layers of inhabitation at Athens. And so we can say a lot about what was being built there, as opposed to a place like Sparta, where there doesn't seem to have been much public building or other city states that again, had a lower rate of public building and also just not as much preserved. So I want to start by taking a look at our map of Athens. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is not the best map of Athens. Um, I put it together, I'm not particularly happy with it. I might have to remake it, we'll see. Um, and I wanted to start by looking at some of the major features of the city of Athens, just so you can acquaint yourself with what you're looking at. So uh, let's start with the river. There was a river that ran through Athens. It's the blue line right here. It was called uh, the Eridanos River. It's essentially dried up now. If you go to Athens, you're not really gonna um, see any evidence of it. Um, there's also a couple hills. Athens is in Greece and Greece is very mountainous. So there's a lot of hills going on. Um, here I've outlined some of the major hills of the city of Athens. Uh, and this includes the uh, this big hill right here is the Museon Hill. It's also just called the Hill of the Muses. Uh, this other large hill just beside it is called the Nymphaeon Hill. Just the Hill of the Nymphs is also um, acceptable. Uh, then you have um, right here a hill known as the Areopagus, right? That's a familiar word to us. The Areopagus literally means the Hill of Ares. Um, and we know that's where that that there was a, a aristocratic council in the archaic period of Athens called the Areopagus that did a lot of um, the lawmaking work in Athens. And they have their name because they met here on the Areopagus Hill, right? There's not a building there. They meet in the open air uh, on top of this just craggy hill. There's not even a flat surface that's been carved out. Um, and then we have the Acropolis. And if you haven't if you're not familiar with the Athenian Acropolis, we'll look at some pictures of it soon, but uh, this is the Acropolis right here. Okay, so we've got a river, we've got some hills. There is another smaller hill I didn't mark that's called the Theseon Hill or just the Hill of Theseus. Remember, Theseus is the local hero of Athens. So um, the, the Hill of Theseus is about right here, just above the Areopagus. All right, so a couple other things that I want to point out. One is this space right here that is sort of between the area, just north of the Areopagus and Acropolis and, and right beside the Hill of Theseus. This space is known as the Agora. We're gonna take a closer look at it in a moment. The Agora is essentially a large open space in the city that was a market space. You could set up stalls and sell your goods there, but it also became the civic center of the city of Athens. And a lot of civic buildings go there. And um, we'll eventually see that it houses markets, that it houses um, offices for government, uh, for, for the democratic government and its different parts. It has the mint, it has a place for the generals to meet, an armory. Um, so a lot of civic buildings, um, as well as some religious buildings, um, go in the Agora. The last uh, thing I wanna note, is some a little bit about these roads. So Athens is surrounded by gates uh, or by walls eventually, and you can see that there are many gates, um, and each of these gates is connected to a different road leading to a different place. Um, the the most notable uh, of these gates, the main gate of Athens, is the Dipylon Gate. You might remember we looked at something called the Dipylon Crater. It's because it was found by the Dipylon Gate, uh, and that's up here. And the road that runs through it, I've marked it here in this lighter gray. Um, when it's inside the city of Athens, it is known as the Panathenaic Way, right? Um, because this is the road that a procession of worshipers takes and they travel up to the Acropolis to the Temple of Athena there and then do the rites associated with the worship of Athena during the Panathenaea festival, um, which I mentioned earlier with the, the Pesistras, but we'll look at closer when we get to Greek religion, I think next week. Um, and then when that road leaves the Dipylon Gate and goes out of the city of Athens, it's known as the Sacred Way. 
because it takes you to the town of Eleusis, where there is a very important cult to Demeter and Persephone. And again, we'll talk more about that cult next week. Um, so these are some of the major features of the city of Athens itself. Now I want to take a closer zoomed in look at two, spa two spaces in particular. Um, one is the Acropolis, so this is a general outline of the Acropolis, and one is the Agora. So this represents the Hill of Theseus here, this is the Sacred Way, and two other minor roads that connect. Um, I'm sorry, the Panathenaic Way, and then two other minor roads. So the Agora, the, you got this kind of triangle um, that things are built along, although some stuff ends up out here as well. Um, okay, so Let's start actually with the Agora. So I'm gonna make this sharing mode. Oh, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. I wanna make this present mode. That makes more sense. Um, okay, so what's going on in the Agora? So first of all, we have the road that splits through, the main road that kind of splits down it. This, as I said, this is the Panathenaic Way. Um, and then what else can we see there? In the archaic period, there are a number of buildings, but they are mostly gone and difficult to reconstruct. So we're actually only going to focus on two. In the classical period, there will just be a proliferation of buildings. Um, but right now, we're just going to focus on two. So the one, if you look at the slides, um, you can see a reconstruction. It's called the Altar of the Twelve Gods. It was established during the Pisistratid period, actually during the reign of Hippias and Hipparchus. Um, and it is what it sounds like. It is an altar that is dedicated to the worship of twelve gods. No one specifies which 12 gods, but presumably the 12 Olympian gods are the ones met here. Um, so it is simply an altar for sacrifices surrounded by a little low wall, uh, and that then public sacrifices would have been done there. It's located here, about where um, the Panathenaic Way meets this, this road that goes down. Um, and it was considered the geographical center of the city of Athens. And when Athens measured distance to anything, it started, the start point was the altar of the 12 gods. Um, so it had a kind of a symbolic significance in that sense as well. The other major building that um, was um, in the Agora of Athens at this time is known as the Royal Stoa or the Stoa Basileus. Uh, again, this is just a reconstruction, obviously, of it. Um, so what is a Stoa? So a Stoa is usually a rectangular building um, that at the front has columns that hold up uh, the, the front of the roof, uh, and then creates a kind of essentially a covered walkway or a covered open space. Sometimes there are individual rooms behind that, um, but with the Royal Stoa, these early Stoas, we don't have it. So it's essentially just an open space. You can kind of see into the model here um, that it's uh, just an open space and that you can access by, by going through these columns. So it has a lot of the look of a temple, right? And it too would have a gabled roof with pediments on the side. It too could have a, a frieze um, with, in this case, metopes and and, and triglyphs, um, it has Doric columns. And you can play around with that, right? You can have ionic columns, you can have an, um, an architrave go across instead of a frieze, um, you can do different things. But stoas usually aren't highly decorated. You don't see carvings on the metopes or carvings on the pediments or anything like that because they're more functional buildings. And the royal stoa, we're told, was used as the headquarters of the archon known as the Basileus, who was the religious head of uh, Athens. Um, so presumably the other archons had their own meeting spaces, we just don't really know much about them. So the Royal Stoa goes right around here um, along this road uh, up against the hill of Theseus. It actually gets expanded later on um, and, and continues to be used for many centuries. Um, so that's about it for the Agora actually. And so I want to turn our attention now um, to, well, there's the Southeast Fountain House I didn't bother with, um, but there is a fountain house down here, um, which was also known to be built in the Archaic period um, and used for many centuries after. Um, so now I want to turn to the Acropolis. Okay, so this is what the Acropolis looks like. If you've never seen the Acropolis, it is this rocky outcropping in the, in the midst of Athens. Um, it was uh, probably the site of, the, of a Mycenaean era palace. Um, and then after that, it may have, well have been used as a site for pal the palace of the Pisistratids. They may have had a palace up there as well. Um, but towards the, the end of the Pisistratid reign, we begin to see uh, that they, um, well, even a little before the Pisistratid reign as well, we begin to see that the um, Acropolis becomes a, a religious center of Athens. And it becomes the site of many, many religious monuments and sort of the most important religious monuments in the Athenian world. Uh, and so they begin to build a series of temples up there, um, generally dedicated to the goddess Athena, who is the patron goddess of Athens. So the first temple that goes up there, supposedly, is known as the Hecatompodon. 
right? It's a heck of a word. It means 100 foot long because apparently it was 100 feet long. Um, and this is probably built around 570 to 550 BC. Uh, so the Hecatompodon actually doesn't appear on this layout. Um, we'll come back to this because it's so old, right? It was, it was uh, taken down uh, by the time, uh, by uh, 490 BC. Yeah, so it's it's put up around 570 to 550 BC. It's taken down around 490 BC. Um, and the reason it is taken down is because they decide they're going to build an even bigger temple, right, um, to honor the goddess Athena um, and to commemorate the fact that they won a victory over Persia at what's called the Battle of Marathon, which we'll talk about later. Um, the foundations of this thing are utterly gone. And there's actually a lot of argumentation about where it is and what what parts of temples go with the Hecatompodon. There's a lot of argument amongst archaeologists. Um, but we have identified pedimental sculptures that we think go with the Hecatompodon. Um, and here they are. Here's the remains of them. You have two lions attacking a bull right here. It's, it's very hard to make out because it's so fragmentary. Um, you do have a uh, person, a, maybe a dying warrior over here. Um, and then you have a what's known as um, the three-bodied demon sometimes or the blue beard demon because their beards actually were painted blue, uh, which is a three-bodied monster, um, probably like um, Typhon or Nereus, something from myth. Um, that fought um, Heracles. And so this may be scenes of, of Heracles um, and his uh, deeds. Uh, we know the Metopes probably were also, or at least some of the Metopes were decorated because we found a piece of a Metope showing uh, horses and other piece having um, um, panthers. Uh, and there probably was an Acrotarian on the top with a Gorgon on it because we found pieces of that as well. Um, so this is the Hecatompodon and it is kind of down here, right, on the southern side of the Acropolis. Um, here we have some close up on this bull eating it or this lion eating a bull. And there are also some snakes, uh, as well. Um, and this actually, the snakes come from the other, other side pet of the pediment. All right. Now, um, the Hecatompodon goes down there. We also then see the construction during the Pisistrata reign, um, somewhere between 525 and 500 BC, of a new temple to Athena, which is called the Old Temple of Athena, or the Temple of Athena Polyus. I know the the, uh, the names on this is difficult because it's a lot of different temples to Athena, essentially. Um, so it was built, like I said, around 525. It got destroyed when the Persians sacked the city of Athens in 480, which again we'll get to. Um, it was... Um, a fairly normal Doric temple, right, um, with a, a kind of a layout that we've seen before. You can see the layout here. Uh, it has two adaton chambers for some kind of ritual purpose, um, and then a main cella and the porches and, and everything we've now come to expect. Um, one of the pediments survives in some pieces, and it seems to depict uh, the Gigantomachy, which is a mythical battle in which the uh, gods, the Olympian gods, fought the race of giants who were trying to to, to throw them down and, and take over the world. Uh, and the central figure is Athena herself. Here you can see her. She's wearing uh, her cloak. It's got a snake woven into the end. It's a, a really interesting and cool figure, um, but not a lot survives. So you can see the Athena here and then some of the other fighting figures, um, which have been put back together and, and, and placed together. So that's probably what the pedimental sculpture there uh, looks like. Now, I said that the Hecatompodon lasts until 490 BC when the Athenians said, we're actually going to build a new temple. Um, and so they, they pull it down and they start work on the new temple. And the new temple is known as the Older Parthenon. Right? Again, all these names are a bit confusing. Um, so we pull down the Hecatompodon and we put up the Older Parthenon. Uh, the Older Parthenon um, was begun around 490 BC. It was meant to be bigger than the Hecatompodon and sort of on a grander scale. Um, and it is never completed because it takes a while to build temples in the ancient world. They're really big projects. And Athens gets sacked by the Persians in 480. So it's never completed. Um, and then following that sack, Athens for a while decides not to try to rebuild and try to sort of commemorate what had happened. Although this does not last and eventually uh, later in the 5th century BC, they'll start a whole new building program that'll renovate essentially the entirety of um, the um, Acropolis. Um, so yeah, uh, the older, not, older Parthenon started in 480, um, but then destroyed in the Persian sack. And I'll say also th this old temple of Athena is also destroyed in the Persian sack, so, so neither of them last. So yeah, you have your Hecatompodon, which was built pretty early, around 570 BC um, for Athena. Um, then you have your old temple of Athena, built around 525. 
Um, and then in 490, you, you tear down the Hecatompanon, and you build your old Parthenon, and then in 480, both the old Temple of Athena and the older Parthenon get destroyed. Okay. Um, all right. The only other temple that I want to mention is the Temple of Olympian Zeus, which is a temple that was a that was begun by Pisistratus. It was meant to be sort of the greatest temple in the Greek world, the biggest, and it is a monumental scale. Uh, it is not on the Acropolis, it's not in the Agora, it's actually down here in essentially the southeastern corner of the city of Athens. Um, but we're not going to look too closely at it because it's never, well, it is finished eventually, but it's not finished anytime soon. Um, Pisistratus starts it, and then actually his sons restart it on an even bigger scale, but then they are deposed and Athens isn't interested in working on it. And some Athenians say it's actually, it's kind of arrogance to build something this big and, and grand. Um, and so it's, it's generally abandoned. It's not finished until the Roman period. Um, so it takes centuries for them to finish it. Um, so that's all we'll mention about the Temple of Olympian Zeus. Um, all right, so that is it for your sort of introduction to Athens and the archaic monuments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.